Hi everyone, and welcome to Ambi's Amateur Art. Uh, this will actually be my last stream for a few months at least. Um, I was doing it bi-weekly, but I won't be able to do it for a few months because I'm pregnant <laughs> and going to be giving birth soon. So uh, today I'm going to be painting some of the bad guy minis from Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Last time I started painting the heroes and then we decided to play the game last weekend. So I needed to finish painting the heroes so that we could use them. So I finished them all. Uh, so well, I'll show you when I switch cameras, but, but I have all six heroes painted and finished. And I'm currently playing a campaign two players with Gimli and Legolas so that's fun and none of the bad guys are painted yet but I primed them all so I primed them with gray primer which is the only primer I have um, and I'm not sure which one I should start on so if anyone has any suggestions for which villain to start on there's one cave troll uh, there's three warg guys, which are like wolves. There's a bunch of these bandit dudes. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, there's three of these... I don't know what these are either. <laughs> like skeleton cloaked guys. And then there's three different types of orcs. There's one with a bow and arrow the kind with just a knife and then kind with two hatchet things. So I don't know. I was thinking maybe I could do the cave troll since there's only one of them. Then I have a better chance of getting further with it in the hour. But we'll see. So hopefully everyone can see this okay. Let me know. Um, the, these are the ones I painted. So I had uh, done most of Legolas last time and finished. And all of the heroes I painted blue for the base. So there. And here's Gimli. Um, there's Aragorn. Um, this is. Elena, I think. <laughs> and this is Berivor. And this is Bilbo. Yeah, so we're just using Legolas and Gimli right now. Because we're just playing two-player. Those are the heroes. Put them to the side. I don't know. I could put them... So maybe I'll just try painting the cave troll today? This guy's really big. Otherwise there's a bunch of villains. There's a lot to paint. And I'm not going to be able to finish it soon. So I refreshed my wet palette because the old one was very messy and getting dry. It was kind of hot the last couple of weeks, so it was drying out faster. Um, what color, Sam says, what color did you use for hero bases? Looks really good. I used blue. <laughs> I So all of my colors I uh, mix. So I don't know if you can see. So yeah, it's like a I mixed a bluish... I don't know. I like blue and some other colors. But yeah, thanks. And I don't do any fancy bases. I was watching other people do miniatures and they have all these fancy bases. So I never knew how bases worked before. But then, then I watched some videos and 
So apparently you can like, you cut off, or for a base you would cut off the regular base and then you have a different base and you glue it on. And then like the other bases are all fancy and have grass and stuff on it or whatever you want on the base or people make their own out of cork or whatever. So that seems pretty neat. Okay, so this is an orc. I mean, cave troll. <laughs> I don't know why I said orc. <laughs> There's a bunch of orcs over there. <laughs> so these are my paints. Mm. I don't know, and I watched a video recently on the actual primary colors are cyan and magenta and yellow. But they don't sell those in the cheap paint store. <laughs> like, I get the cheap acrylic paints at the stores, and they don't sell those primary colors. So that's why, like, the, the green and purple that I mix are usually end up kind of muddy. Also because I think acrylic paint just ends up being a little muddy sometimes when you mix it. But... Maybe at some point I will splurge because the slightly more expensive paint has has like the primary cyan and primary magenta colors. And I mean a, a tube of paint lasts a long time, <laughs> especially if I'm only using it whoops. Especially if I'm only using it for painting miniatures. Although at some point I want to do like painting art. I have a bunch of canvases that I bought that I haven't painted. Okay, so I'm gonna make so that I don't have any reference pictures for for the villains because in, in they don't have any cards or anything in the game, so I get to make up the colors. Um, and I was trying to look up the descriptions of them from the books because I don't remember. And I think the cave troll said it has like dark greenish scaly skin. So I'm trying to do a dark greenish color right now. That looks that looks cave trolly. And they have the scales on there. So that's cool. But I don't know what color I'm gonna make his uh, underwear, <laughs> the pants, skirt thing, I don't know what that's called. So for now I'm just going to do one layer of this green color that I mixed. Hopefully I mixed enough of it. Oh, and then I was thinking for the villains, each type of villain, I might do a different color base because right now we're um, the hard part of, of setting up when we pick out villains is finding the right one. Because they're all just gray and they're all around the same size except for the cave troll, which we haven't encountered yet because we've only done one scenario. But um, but yeah, it's like, oh, put one of these out. And it's like, oh, it's the one with the bow. And then we have to try to find it. So it might be easier if I do all the, like, the bases of each type a different color. But I'm not sure what colors I would do for each one. So I'll have to figure that out at some point. <laughs> Oh, this guy has a lot of skin. I might not have mixed enough green. <sighs> That's typical for me. That's okay. okay. I'm 
I guess I'm used to doing the smaller ones. So I'm just like putting it everywhere. This part, I'm not being precise at all. I'm just trying to cover most of the stuff, most of the grooves. If anyone has any questions in the chat, let me know. Uh, I'm watching it while I'm painting. Yeah, so this is one that probably uh, a wash will do really good on it because he's got these, I don't know if you can see, but like there's scales on his back that are indented. So then theoretically a wash, so a wash is like a thinner, thinned out dark paint and that goes into the grooves so then it like fills in the shadows and stuff so theoretically that would, would go in there and make it look really good I think I'm still not great at doing washes because <laughs> I mix my own for that too and I don't know if I'm doing like the right proportions sometimes Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings hype, yes. Hi, Roy. Okay, I didn't mix enough of the green so that for his legs, but I'll just make them slightly different shade then. Congrats on the big news. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> I assume you're talking about the babies. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited and worried. <laughs> so now I'm mixing more green because I didn't mix enough the first time, which is typical for me. It's because before I didn't used to use a wet palette, so um, like if I mix too much, then I would just waste it. But now I should just err on the side of mixing more because it's the wet palette kind of saves it. This is darker than the last time. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Fred. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Roy. Yeah, the wet palette. This is a Tupperware lid, and um, <laughs> Tupperware lid, and paper towel, and then parchment paper. <laughs> Between Disney songs and 18xx, they will be well rounded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I wonder if they'll like Disney. This is a pretty big miniature. Well, compared to all the other ones in this game that I've painted. And I guess there isn't, aren't that many different things so most of it is skin because he doesn't wear many clothes because I guess his skin is very armor full hard hard skin so he doesn't need armor or anything so most of the mini is this this green color Oh, Roy said he had to run from this guy in the game. Oh, we haven't encountered him yet. We've only done like one, uh, one scenario, chapter, scenario. Haven't even finished an adventure yet. So, <laughs> so we're gonna be slowly making our way through the game, hopefully. I don't know when we'll encounter this guy. But he seems cool. Fred says 18xx games still scare me, so does painting my minis. I've got one Gloomhaven mini painted and I quit. Oh. Did you like painting it though or? Okay. Because, uh, yeah, if you don't like painting, then then there's no, no reason to paint the minis. But I like painting. It's, it's kind of a, like a stress relief for me, actually. Calming. As long as I don't worry too much about getting everything perfect. <laughs> but, yeah. But most of the time when you're playing games, you're not up close enough for it to matter. So it's fine that it's not perfect. And, yeah, the only time you get up close enough to see if it's not perfect is if you're taking a picture. So then you just take the pictures from far away with a not really fancy camera, and it's fine. 
That's what I do. <laughs> um, leave this video heading home. Have fun hanging. Okay, bye, Roy. It was fun, but I felt like the more I fixed it, the worse it got. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> so you just have to. That I just there's a point where it's just like, okay, this is fine. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that mistake there. <laughs> Okay, so I think I got all his skin. Sometimes I miss parts on the, on the mini because it's hard to tell. But this, okay, that, that that's his skin. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure if these are holes where his skin shows through. That's his his rag thing. So, skin is done. I'm going to put a little bit more on his hand. I don't know what that. Hmm. And I guess his face is not done. I don't know. I'll have to do different colors on his face, I guess, because he's got teeth and eyes and stuff. Don't know what color. His eyes are so small. I mean, it's, it's just like a indentation. So maybe it's just going to be like a black thing from the wash. I don't know. Okay, so I think, I think that's it for the skin. Uh, you were trying to paint fire and ice. Don't know how to do either. Like, the oh, like painting a thing of fire and ice. Yeah, I guess that's harder because they have like to make it look like fire and ice. Actually, it has to be multicolored and ice is translucent. So that, <laughs> that I don't even know how you would do that on a mini, but. Oh wait, I think I missed some here. Hmm. Yeah, so far the ones I've done are just basic, like one color for a part. Like one color for his skin, that's easy. <laughs> um, and then I pick a color for the stick here, and I pick a color for the stick. Or stone, which is probably going to be gray. <laughs> so I think. Wait, is. Okay, I think he. Those are just wrinkles. He's not. I don't think he's wearing anything other than this um, cloth thing. So. Oh, he has toenails. Should I paint his toenails? <laughs> no. Um, what? I assume the cloth will be like some sort of brown, tan, or something. So I'll try to mix a tan color. Um, actually, I'll do the weapon first. Because his hand looks more dry than the area around the cloth. So... We'll do the stone. The stone is gray, which it's already gray, but I'm just going to paint more gray on it. Because the gray was the primer, so I don't I don't actually know if... You're probably allowed to just leave primer as the thing. But just to be complete, I will... Paint it again. Hi, Hunter, or I assume it's is it Hunter <laughs> or yeah. Uh.
Okay, so I'm painting the stone now. I'm painting it, I guess, a slightly lighter gray than the primaries. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> okay, it is hunter. Is it usually you when you're hunter on the um, on the family showdown account with, for the chats? Uh. Well, Fred said he was proud of his paint job until he looked up what other people online had done with the same mini. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, when I look up other people painting stuff, it's a lot fancier <laughs> than what I do. And then it's like, whoa. Hi, Rainer. But yeah, you don't just try not to compare yourself to other people for these because it's just not a competition. You're just making your board game nicer. And as long as you enjoy the paint job when you're playing it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I got all the gray. Okay, and then I'll do, I'll make a brown for the stick. Brown, red, and yellow. Rainer says you, admi you admire those who can paint it's not part of your skill set well. well if you want to try painting I'm sure if you practice some you'll you'll be able to do it Like a lot of the painting that I'm doing is relatively simple. It's just the hard part is um, staying in the in the right zone. So that's like I guess a dexterity thing. It's a dexterity game. You don't want to paint over. So now I'm being careful not to paint over his hand when I'm painting the stick or the, the handle of this club. It's not really a stick. And even if I do it a little bit, it's okay. Might be time to start using a smaller brush. <laughs> But yeah, I think just with any other skill, like with practice, you get better at painting, hopefully. I think I've gotten a little better. 
uh, painting minis. I've, I've learned some some stuff since since the stuff fables one. I actually preferred the way they did the ink wash minis in Mechs vs. Minions and the painted ones that came out of Betrayal House on the Hill. Oh yeah, Betrayal House on the Hill had like pre-painted minis, huh? Um, yeah. I don't actually remember what the Mex vs. Minions ones are like. Because I don't own that game. Or I never owned that game. I don't own Betrayal either. But, <laughs> but I used to. So I got some brown on his hand. I'm going to try to like wipe it off with this other paintbrush that doesn't have paint on it, but I don't know if it'll do anything. It's like, it just ends up smearing it a little, but whatever. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what brand of paint do I use? Uh, I am not brand specific. I use whatever acrylic paint I buy at the store. Um, the, so actually right now I have two different brands that I'm using because the everything except for white is Ameri Americana, this, which I actually got um, for free in college, so it's very old. Uh, <laughs> But, but like someone was just cleaning out their stuff and getting rid of it. And I was like, oh, I'll take it. Free paint. Um, but then white. White I always end up using up more of because like I mix that into a lot of stuff. And so I got a new thing of white at the craft store. And this is, I guess, artist sloth. I got a big one of white because I use a lot of white. But yeah, I was talking earlier um, about, so I I mix the colors out of these things, but um, I saw a video recently on like red, blue, and yellow aren't the actual primary colors. You can't actually mix the right colors, like the green and purple don't come out good um, because they're not real primary colors. You want cyan, magenta, and yellow. but the cheap paints at the store that I buy don't have those colors, don't have cyan and magenta. They always have the red, blue, and yellow. So I might, um, oh, I missed some green. So at some point I might splurge a little and get cyan and magenta from a slightly more expensive brand <laughs> that has it. Because I also like, or in high school I used to paint on like canvas. I took art class and would paint like paintings, I guess, like of Sauron or something. But <laughs> um, yeah, so I always mix colors for that too. And I have all these canvases that I bought on sale that I haven't painted on yet, but I want to at some point. Um, Nate says painted. His opinion painted minis are better than staring at gray blobs of plastic. Yes. And it's easier to differentiate them. Like, for the heroes, I painted the heroes. Um, it was kind of hard to tell which was which for some of them. Like, 
because they're a lot of them Aragorn and Berber and um, Elena they're all the same height and they're all wearing robes <laughs> and so if they're all the same color and like they're all just gray you have to look through them carefully to see which one's which but now that they're painted it's it's easier although they're still wearing similar colors because they're all wearing like green robes Okay, what color is rope? Rope would be. Okay, I'm gonna wash, rinse this paintbrush. Rope is like tan. I guess rope would probably be a similar color to whatever that is. I can use the brown. And just add some white, and then it'll be tannish. So I'm planning hmm, what color do I want? Make it a little more yellowy. So now I'm trying to mix a color for his uh his clothing. I still don't know what it's called. Yeah, and I'm hoping when I paint all the bad guys, like right now, I'll just grab a handful of them. There's there's a bunch of bad guys, um, <laughs> and it's hard to tell which is which when when they're just like all on the table and we're trying to grab, like, oh, get three bandit guys or something. Like, which ones are those? And they're the ones with the club. So. Oh, these, oh wait, here. These four are all different figures. It's hard to tell, but and I think making the loincloth. Yes, that's what it's called. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'd forgotten. But yeah, so I was thinking making the bases different colors for all the bad guys would help, or like for each group of bad guy. But I don't know. There's only so... Like, I don't want them to be bright colors or anything. So I'm not sure what colors I would do to differentiate them. When painting multiple models at the same time, do you do it assembly line style? Um, so yeah, the only other time I've done that is I've painted multiple models at the same time as doing stuff fables. And yeah, I was doing it assembly line. So I would like mix a color and then do it on all of them. And then that was also cool because it would dry. Because um, sometimes when I'm painting just one mini, I have to wait for a part to dry before I start on the next part. But with multiple ones, it would, by the time I'm done with like the one color and the assembly line, it's pretty much dried at the beginning, on the beginning one. And I will do assembly line style for these ones too. Although, yeah, that might not happen on the stream because I'm. Whoops. <laughs> Move this over here. <laughs> that it did not fall into the paint. That is good. <laughs> Otter, thanks for the. Um, I don't know what that's called, tip thing. Love painting monsters, more freedom to experiment. Yeah. Yeah, and this is my first time 
Because with the stuffed fables, the monsters also had cards with, with like, pictures of what colors they were and stuff. So I just followed that to pick the colors. But this is my first time not having a reference at all. So I just get to do the colors myself, which is more creative, I guess. I'm usually not. I usually just follow the directions, kind of. This line plot is really thick. I got a little bit of paint on his hand, but then I wiped it off, and most of it came off because I was fast enough, I think. So this one's probably going to need two coats because it's a lighter color going on top of my messy green paint job. So some of the green is still showing through. Um, so I will do another coat later. After this dries. Okay, no. It's just like all on the bottom here too, which is weird. Hard to, hard to get to. Although I guess if if you do like the basing where you cut it off of the base and then put it on a different base, then you could probably paint the bottom while it's cut off the base. That might make it easier to paint the bottom. Stuff. But I am not that fancy. Q-tip of water for cleaning up spills, or will it potentially ruin the dried or mostly dried nearby colors? Um, I've never tried a Q-tip for this. Um, I've tried paintbrushes, so sometimes, yeah, sometimes I use a, a paintbrush because it's smaller, it's fine, and it can like reach into the spills. And then, um, if yeah, like if the nearby colors though aren't completely dried, the water because acrylic is a water-based paint, um, and even if it is dried, if you rub it too hard with water, it'll it'll come off. So you have to be careful with that. So sometimes I just try it with not too much water, um, and just just the paintbrush to like kind of try to rub off, rub it off, and then it's good enough. I think. Okay, so I think I got most of his line cloth on the first pass. I'm gonna have to remix more of this color because I, I think I just ran out. But yeah, um, do you have a designated craft area paint out or just sit up at a kitchen table or desk? So right now because I'm streaming I have like I'm doing it at in the room that I currently am using for video stuff which will no longer, uh, which will not be that room anymore in once, uh, 
once babies move into this room. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but before, when I wasn't streaming, I just did it at the kitchen table. Downstairs. Mm. Okay, so now I'm going to do a... But yeah, you can just do it anywhere that you have a flat surface. If th this table is, is like not a nice table, it's one of those plastic tables from Costco, so I don't have anything covering it to protect it because I can just, like, I don't really care too much about getting paint on it. Um, and I can wash it probably. Uh, but like if it were a nice wooden table or something, you'd want something covering it. Like our kitchen table is, uh, or I guess it's technically like a breakfast table, I don't know. But it's wood, but it has a glass covering on it. So then glass is really easy to clean up. And so if I get paint on it, I just wipe it with water. What am I doing? Okay, rope, rope. Color is rope. Not like that. I guess you'll probably want good lighting for painting um, so that you can see the minis and the colors that you're doing. So that's the only thing. So you'll want a place that has good lighting. Uh, my kitchen table is right next to like a big window, so I would have the sunlight if I were doing it during the day. But so if you don't have that, then then you you might want a place that has like lamps or something for people and a comfortable chair. Yeah, I probably want a comfortable chair. We don't have many comfortable chairs. <laughs> like, I don't usually lean back in chairs much, so I'm like, especially when I'm painting mini, so it's just really using it as like a stool. I'm not using the backrest, because like, I need to look at it. Okay, that looks rope covered. Sweet. Uh, do I use one of those dust mounted or heavy base magnifying lamps? No, I do not have one of those. Although that would really help with the details probably. That, but that is why I end up like, <laughs> probably am always leaning forward to look at the details because I don't have a magnifying glass. But yeah, uh, people, I know that other people who have, who paint more and like have specific places set up for painting, they have, um, they have like a lamp and they have the magnifying glass. Um, they also have things to hold the minis, so you're not just holding the base, like you can hold it. Further down, I guess. Mm. And I don't have any of that. Yeah. 
but I also don't have that many games with minis, so. I was excited to get this game so that I could paint it. Well, and, and so that I could play it. No, <laughs> not just about painting. Did hot glue a cork to the bottom of the base. Does that come off easily? So people just use hot glue or poster pack and a bottle lid. Yeah. And I think people have used like like those medicine bottles or something. Um, and then poster pack, that poster stuff. But I don't have that either. I was thinking of doing that at some point, but eh. <laughs> maybe eventually. I haven't um, like felt the need to go buy that stuff. Because <laughs> I don't have Poster, um, poster tack. Hot glue, glue peels off without a problem. Okay, yeah. So yeah, if, I could, if there's a random thing that I have lying around. So this is me trying to wipe off the. <laughs> the rope color that bleeded over into the rock. Pull most of the rope. Uh, there's rope on the wood too, so I got the rope on the rock. And then there's rope on the wood. And, and then I think that'll be it for the rope. Have Roy 3D print me a holder. He should. <laughs> Although uh, he lives kind of far away, <laughs> and I'm not gonna be seeing him at any conventions anytime soon. So I won't be going. But yeah, I kind of want to get a 3D printer because all these, I'm seeing all this 3D printed stuff. Like Roy made that um, War of the Ring dice tray, the One Ring, which looks really cool. I don't have War of the Ring and I don't have any games with dice, but I want it anyway. <laughs> Okay, I spilled some over into the gray, but actually I still have the gray color, so I can repaint that over. Yes, wet palette. Okay. Yeah, so another thing if you spill over and you still have the color that that was on the part that you spilled over into, you can just paint over it, which is what I'm doing now, kind of. But then you have to make sure you don't spill back over it because it's just an endless, endless loop.
Okay. So I think I've got all the colors of this weapon. And so now I'm going to do another coat on his loincloth. I have to remix it because I uh, ran out of that color. <laughs> so I'll just mix all of this stuff together. Whoops. <laughs> I wasn't watching. <laughs> uh -oh. I kind of looked away and then ended up grabbing a bunch of red. So now I need yellow. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to take my bigger brush for mixing this. Uh, Fred asked, do you ever dry brush and ink wash after you're done and you finish coating? Yes, so I've done washes. Um, so my friend who, who did some mini painting uh, as well, like for hobby, told me about like using this pledge floor cleaner <laughs> for washes because it kind of like sticks into the the hole and so I found a website that was talking about it so you mix that with water and so I have like a mixture of, of that and water and then I mix it with paint um, so I can make like black or dark brown or any color now and then um, and then I put that over the parts that I want to do washes. I'm still not like super good at knowing how much paint to mix in it and if it's good or like if it'll turn out good. So I, but I've tried doing washes and then I tried some dry brush on the heroes for some of it, like. Let's see, who did I? Probably can't tell on any of them. <laughs> but I don't actually know like if there's a fancy technique for dry brushing other than just taking a dry brush and paint and then like doing it on the on the raised parts. But I don't do it for shading or anything, usually, or I haven't. Maybe I should start doing that. Maybe I'll try it for this, the scale things, because that might look cool. And then the finish coating, yeah, for the finish I have um, spray, like Kry Krylon. Uh, I use satin finish, satin or matte. It's just a clear coating that protects everything so that because the acrylic is is um, water soluble. Oh, did this part not get green on it? There. Um, yeah, so putting the finish on it will help keep it. Keep it there when you're playing with it because otherwise it'll just wear off or something. Okay. So this is a slightly different color for the wine cloth, but we'll do it still. Oh, and he also has like rope things on his loin cloth. Maybe I'll do those a different color, I don't know. It's already been an hour, so I guess I'm not going to be able to finish this on the stream because um, it's about time to wrap up, but I'll finish painting his loincloth, and then maybe I'll try to do some details on the face and the, 
really quick. And I won't do any like washes or anything. But that'll be later off stream. But yeah, let, let me know if you have any questions in the chat as I'm wrapping up. Um, and yeah, this, uh, I normally do these every other week, but I will be taking a break for at least a few months um, because I'm close to uh, having children. And I don't know when I'll have them, but I'm currently pregnant and they're coming soon. So I won't be able to stream for a while. But hopefully I'll come back when things settle down and I'll continue doing art stream. But at that point, I don't even know what I'll be working on because I might <laughs> I might have time to be painting these off stream. Oops. Oh no. Okay, I'm just wiping that with my finger. Got it off. Um, but yeah, so. But this this stream is is not just for mini painting. So if you have any ideas for future things you'd like me to you'd like to see me make or attempt <laughs> for game upgrades or anything, um, let me know. I guess it'd have to be for a game that I own, which. But yeah, the problem is I don't have that many games with minis in them, so eventually I'm going to run out of minis to paint. And... Oops. I keep getting his finger. Uh, still have some green. Yeah, let me know what other things other than miniature painting you might want to see. I did a few weeks or a few, I guess last month, the week of Gen Con. Um, I was, I did a stream where I was making, I made some custom resources out of Palm and Clay. That was fun. And it was something I'd been wanting to do for years. Finally got around to doing it. I am missing a lot. I think I got most of his morning, morning call. All of it. Yeah. There. Control. And I still have some green, so I I was messy. And I'm trying to fix that. Or at least a little bit of it. Enough. I made. Fred said he made little brains for zombie dice. Ooh. These are disturbing. Why are they so detailed? <laughs> That's pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna just do like a white for his teeth. I'm gonna try. 
So the details are hard because they're so tiny. I think I might need to get a new brush because this one's getting kind of frayed. Oh, he has a tongue too. I guess I need to do his tongue. His teeth probably shouldn't be like super white. It's probably not. Probably hasn't been to the dentist. Ah, that's fine. Okay, and then I think tongue, and then that'll be it. And I think for his eyes, I'm just going to use the. I don't even know. Try. Yeah, because his eyes. I might just do use a wash for his eye. Eyes. He has two eyes. <laughs> Rainer knows for a fact that orcs take very good care of their teeth. Okay, so maybe his teeth can't be white. Wait, but this is a cave troll, not an orc. So, maybe not. Huh, I don't know if his tongue should be pink like that. Eh, whatever. Eh, I guess that's fine. I got some on the roof of his mouth though, so... Try to, and I guess his mouth can also use a wash, and then it'll make it all darker. So, this is what I have now. I've just painted like one color for each area, and then the wash. Um, I'll probably do like. A black or really dark green wash that would go into these cracks and then some sort of dark brown wash for, for the loincloth mm, and then also some sort of wash for the stone too and then his face also dark and then it goes into the cracks and then I might try dry brushing I don't know the, the stone, the scales, but that'll all be off stream. If I end up finishing this, well, I'll probably be able to work on it this week at least. But yeah, I'll be posting pictures on my Twitter, which is Ambirona, um, A M B I E R O N A. And oh, yeah, if you guys have ideas for future videos because when I come back I might have all of these minis painted depending on how much time I have um, yeah I don't know <laughs> but if we end up playing it more I'll probably want I'll be inspired to be painting it more so that will be um, a thing so, yeah, but if you have ideas for other things I can do to um, make to make my collection, my games fancy, then let me know. Uh, I'll post my collection link in the chat. <laughs> I usually keep that up to date. Um, But yeah, there's not that many games that I own with minis. There's this one, it's Stuff Fables, which I've already painted. And then... Level 7, Omega Protocol has minis. But they're not as nice. <laughs> so I don't even know if I want to paint those. <laughs> and we haven't been playing it that much either. Uh, Fred asked, am I planning on doing a print and play on any more 18xx games? 
Um, maybe? We, we haven't printed played in a few years, actually. <laughs> because it takes a lot of work. <laughs> so we just buy, buy it, if it's available. Um, but... Let's think what... I'm not sure which 18xx we would print and play if we're doing it. Because I don't know if there's anything on our like want list that's print and play. Flashpoint Fire Rescue has minis. Yes. But they're already colored, so... And... Like, the, we don't have the fancy ones. Um, I think one of the expansions comes with minis that have, like, different... The different minis for each character. And we, we only have the regular ones. So it's just, they're all the same shape, but different colors. So it's already easy to tell them apart. And so I, I don't have, I don't know if painting those would make as much sense. I kind of want to get the fancy minis though, and then paint those, but, you know. I do want to play that new game. Quirky Circuits. It's a plaid hat game and has really cute minis too. <laughs> but uh, but we usually have to we usually play games before we buy them now because we have so many games and we need to uh, make sure we like the game before we get it. Um, yeah. So thank you everyone for joining my last stream for a while <laughs> um, and I will I will be posting pictures of of these guys here okay troll this is what he looks like oh, there's still some overflow ah. <laughs> see so he's not perfect there's overflow but it's okay I'm ignoring that like on his um from his loincloth to his leg i don't know if you can see but if you look up close you can see like some of the paint went over but like if you just keep nitpicking it it'll take forever and you might just mess up more so just gotta let it go <laughs> um just start a gift registry for what for minis? <laughs> Games with minis? <laughs> um. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. But yeah, I'll need some ideas. Like, I could do maybe more custom resources for things. I can think of a game that wants them. But really, Dungeon Pets was the one that I wanted to do, and I already did that. Games and Baby Stepo. <laughs> well, I already actually have a lot of kids' games and baby stuff. We we have a lot of uh, toddlers in the family, so we have a lot of hand-me-down stuff. And I've we throughout the years we bought kids games even though we didn't have kids and we would play them with other people's kids so i have we have like one of the boxes of shelves plus a little overflow of kids games <laughs> so yeah oh and i have outboxed on on pre-order or on order it's in an order with pre-order stuff so that's exciting <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this was Ambie's Amateur Art. And I won't see you for a while, but hope you all have a good few months. And um, yeah, I'll still be online on Twitter every once in a while and stuff. And if I'm painting, I will post pictures there and on Instagram. So you can check those. It's Ambi Rona. Um. <laughs> All right. So 
Thanks again for watching and have a good week and month and year. Okay. <laughs> so, bye everyone. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.